Hi, this is Nathan. Welcome to the Wad Fan Chalk Pod. Oh, hi there. Welcome to the pod. I'm Dylan James Weaver, but most folks around here just call me Dylan. Why don't you get the whole family together and join us for another exciting episode of the Wad Fam Chalk Pod? There's there's a video or these videos that I have to watch for Apple training at work. Yeah. There's this one guy who I always know it's him talking because his face isn't always there, but he says customer instead of customer. 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 Yeah, he sometimes says customer. And sometimes just Kushmer. Clive Kushmer is my favorite author. Really, really weird. That is. What an accent. Hello and welcome to the Wadfam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. I'm Andrew Sabo. And uh, we're back for kind of season two. Yeah, I would say. (laughs) I mean, like. There's no break. No. It's It's not really like a second season we finished we're the basically box. still talking about nova Com yeah. this episode these are the stray fries but, at the bottom of the bag yeah that's what this is yeah. we're, we're 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 covering the crumbs of nova Com. i like that the a nova lot. crumbs <laughs> <laughs> okay i like that a lot <laughs> all right so so this this week we're talking about 503 between you and me See that? It rhymes. It's, that's that's special. I like that a lot. Isn't there... There's another part in this episode where there's some accidental rhyming, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I kind of think I know what you're talking about. Anyway. All right. So, uh, with this being episode 503, it is the first normal episode after Exit. Okay. So, 500 is the mm. 500th episode Spectacular, which yes. is kind of clip showy. Yeah, we and talked then about it's, that. The AIO anniversary, focus on the family anniversary, and then we come back with this episode. Jeez. Which both makes sense and doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they're beginning anything new. No, and it also doesn't really feel like they're tying things up. No. It it it's a weird kind of transition-y episode, but it also like doesn't reference Novacom. No. <laughs> No, I, I mean, it, re- just... re- it references the Novacom plot only in that Mitch was working for the FBI. Right. But yes, the, that's, that's the extent of it. Borland being here is kind of the extent of it. But yeah, and this is also, this is track one on album 39. So that's yeah. uh, Friends, Family, and Countrymen. This would be the previous album ends on exit. So yes. if you're listening through album, it's literally right after. First track, yeah. Um, Covering some information from the top, like we think we're gonna do from now on. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give this a shot. If you hate at it, if you hate it, tweet us. If you love it, tweet, tweet us. us. If, if you're, you're ambivalent, bored, tweet, tweet us. us. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's a big world. So so this episode aired January eleventh, two thousand and three, and was written and directed by Kathy Buchanan. Note for just the future. I've only ever referred to her as Kathy Buchanan because that's what she is on the wiki. This episode, at the time this was written, she was not married and was Kathy Waranga. Wow. And that is what you will hear credited at w- the end of the w- episode. Waranga. Weeranga. Weeranga. That Kathy Weeranga. That sounds like the title of a West Anderson film. <laughs> <laughs> Weeranga. You're not that far off. Um, so we've been we've been there's a couple of these in odyssey where they kind of change the name but the wiki always just uses the most recent yeah and because i only recently got this book i didn't actually realize that she was not married yeah well that, that she had a different name at the time of the episode's release because i guys. every time zone out during the credits yes every time <laughs> every time if it's a credits no i don't yeah i, 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 I it's oftentimes don't even listen to the chris wrap up yeah i was gonna say it's a struggle to hold on for the wrap up yeah Um, I will gladly roll the promo. Relationships take time to develop. That's about as insightful as a dog in a sweater. Uh, Thank you. And in the next Adventures in Odyssey, Connie wants to know what Mitch really thinks of her now, which means... A compatibility quiz. This could be a very painful process. Oh, what? Ah, paper cuts. Sorry. Join the fun as Connie and Mitch make some surprising discoveries about each other. You ready? I hope so, because it's the next Adventures in Odyssey, right here on this station. I 
I like the little bongo roll at the very end. Right here on this station. <laughs> wow. Don't change the channel, people. Nah, dial. My goodness. It's rough. Yeah. It, that is... What, what is the music? I, it's like odd, like, sitcom cha-cha music. It's like... Yeah. Doo, 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 the music's doo, weird. Doo, doo, the doo. compatibility quiz is overplayed. Yeah. In this... It literally... This promo... The episode, at least in the beginning, is way more even-handed about the Connie-Mitch relationship. Yeah. Where they are both head over heel, heels. Exactly. Where this makes it seem like... It's very Connie, one-sided. It's, one, it's one-sided and also, like, Connie's, like, insecure and desperate at the time of the compatibility quiz. They're, she's just doing it for fun. Yeah. There is no implication in the episode that, there was that she's insecure. Wrong. Yeah. But... Oh, boy. Whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I would say, I mean, things of note, like, one... We get a normal intro. We get a normal teaser. We, oh, yeah. We're back to it from uh, yeah. coming off Novacom. Like, I guess that's true, true. to be expected, but it's nice. Yeah, yeah we, get a, like... we get a wit one. Yeah. Is yeah. this a wit episode? It, it can't be. <laughs> it's really not. If it is, it shouldn't be. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Wit is... Like... Buckle in, guys, because I have wit feelings today, and I'm sorry. <laughs> um... Yeah. So the episode opens on a Bible study, which they're studying a book, I think, but they're, I don't know. I can't quite tell if it's like a Christian book that they're reading No, through. I think it is, is literally, literally the Bible. Yeah. They talk about it like, well, no. Well. I was under the impression that it was like, uh, I was in a, I was in a book club that was like reading a, a Christian book together, but it yeah. was kind of like a faux Bible study. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those those that's, exist. I was gonna say that's not that uncommon, and that could be the scenario here. I, for whatever reason, thought it was no. More yeah, it's it definitely is just a Bible, Bible. study. Well, and he says Wit says later, like, oh, she wouldn't miss it. Like the Bible study means a lot to her. So, right, um, right. And they're talking about kind of it's like what Wit and Bernard and Jason talking about being open to God's will, right? Yeah. Is is it just the three of them? No, there's a bunch of people well, there. Well, no, 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 I realize, but is it, I guess it is just those. I was trying to think if Jack or Tom or any of them were Tom's there. not there. Jack's not. Jack's we, at least we don't hear from no. him. No, yeah. Um, and it's really just, I think it's Wit and Jason that are talking, and Bernard's, like, running the running the meeting. Supposedly. And Bernard's quipping. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I am so happy to have Bernard back. Oh, yeah. He's so good this episode. Like, we've had... He's a hero. We've had a long break from him because, like, he was in, like, the second Novacom episode when they yeah. buy BTV. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, um, he's been gone. So, they kind of sidelined him due to his prominence in Blackard. Yeah. They uh, decided, well, we don't need as don't much need Bernard... Or, yeah, as much Bernard in this. Well, and they also had, I mean, they had Tom to kind of replace They had a it. lot of play, people already in play, too. Yeah, so, yeah. as far as catching him up and it being relevant, like, Tom really, or Bernard really would have only have been relevant in the way that, like, Wooten was and that they were just kind of, like, marginally affiliated with what was going on. Right. Absolutely. Um, um, but we do get a lot of his, the kind of thing I forgot, which is his, like, weird witticisms that are yes. so much of his character. And he I, just says them all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's about as insightful as a dog in Wait, a sweater. Yeah, that's about... Is, is, what, is what we get. What in is the, that? What A, a dog in a sweater? Okay. You're, but you're right. It's not very insightful, is no, it? No, no. Neither was your joke. Exactly. I don't understand. <laughs> and he said, he asked if Connie's wearing a muzzle. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And yeah. so basically, He's... plot-wise, what's happening is they're in a Bible study. They're having this valuable discussion about submitting to God's will and um and like they're kind of actually being pretty open at least jason seems like he is uh about yeah, his sure. relationship with god and then they kind of turned it on connie and she's like ah, i didn't actually do the reading and yep. same thing with mitch <laughs> yeah mitch and connie bad christians terrible christians because they were out probably bowling instead of <laughs> reading the bible that does seem to be their thing jeez or rollerblading uh um, yeah that's that's yeah, yep. that's of a time. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm not sure that time was 2003. No, no, it definitely. I mean, I was well, I was I was three in 2003, but I was I was rollerblading 
in the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. It's my preferred form of, like, transportation. Like, I, I enjoy, enjoy that more than, uh, like... Biking? Uh, um, no. But prob... I mean, well... Okay, actually, I don't like it that much. I like scootering <laughs> more than rollerblading, and I like biking more than scootering, so... How, how do you feel about rip sticks? I can't rip stick to save my life. I've tried. I can Me get either. about, like, ten feet, and uh, that's about it. And then it kind of cuts to the Bible study being over because nobody's talking because Connie and Mitch can't contribute and uh, and Bernard kind of ends it. Connie and Mitch didn't do the reading. Yes. That's that's it. That's, that's the end. Of the, the, end. The, the thing this made me think of, and it's I think it's in the later Bible study scene where it's definitely clear there are other people in the room. Yeah. I don't think it's very clear in this scene. No, there scene. isn't. Yeah. And it just reminded me of a thing that we haven't really hit on in this show, but is an issue, which is Connie doesn't have friends her age. Yeah. Like, Mitch is here, which is great. Yeah. Other than that... Well, because she doesn't go to school. Like, right, when she was in school, there was more. Yeah. And, like, she's had Eugene, who is close-ish to her age he's yeah. always been older i mean yeah, he like graduated a... well, he, he was in college when she was in high school yes yeah, so he's probably so about that's, four years older yeah, we'll say. which isn't crazy no I no mean, but but she doesn't have like she doesn't have a best girlfriend or anything like nope. that she doesn't have we don't even hear from her mom right. much she's she's at a bible study with three old men and yeah her boyfriend exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess J- Jason's not really an old man, but three no. much older men. <laughs> yeah, th- yeah, people older than her, and they're all guys. Yeah, like she's the only girl we hear from in this Bible study, and in all of Odyssey, actually. <laughs> <laughs> There's That's only one. Almost true, and we see her interacting with the kids yeah. a lot. Yeah, um, and then with the Aubrey a adults bit. a lot, but there's no one Connie's age. Which is other than interesting, Mitch. yeah, and, Mitch and is Eugene. the obvious exception. And Eugene would be right. the only other one, right? Um, who's not around right now? No, and is still, yeah, close in age, yeah, but not, yeah, not not. It's quite just, the same. it's just a, I don't know. It's an issue of Odyssey that I hadn't thought about in a while. No, it, and it, I guess it doesn't. Like, I, I'm just curious as to why they never established that. Like, it doesn't have to be anybody special. It could just be. A character arc of somebody moves to town and then Connie, as a form of ministry, wants to reach out to her and then they're friends. Right. Like, literally, it could be as easy as that and I just don't know why they haven't done yeah. it. I guess maybe they don't feel like they need to, but they yeah. they always expand the kids' universe so much. Right. That they And they never really have... Well, it's... There's kind of a thing with Odyssey where you're either a kid or, or a or, parent or an old person <laughs> like right and so uh, there's a couple characters that kind of get caught in that weird in between yeah but maybe they'd have to give connie an age if they gave her a friend that was her age but they yeah but they definitely like connie is closer to the adults than the kids exactly yeah. like she's seen as an influence to the kids yeah i guess she works full time. Yeah, I guess Nick but she's still is with her mom. Nick's in still high school. It, yeah, that's true. Nick's like a senior or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. It, but it's, Connie still lives with her mom. Yes. Does she ever move out? I'm not up to date enough to know. I. Yeah. Yeah. Poor I, Mrs. Kendall. Like, what is there a Gilmore yeah. Girls situation going on here? Like that. That would be more interesting. That's true. They are. Yeah. I'd be, Two women I'd be, living. I'd be interested yeah. to see that spin Mother, off. mother, daughter, friendship. A lot um, of eating out. Yeah. A lot of quips. We've got, the, a, we've got uh, a diner and everything. <laughs> they could totally do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, no, what's the, what's the other, um, I guess Wooten's. But even then, we don't really know. Like, Wooten seems like he's like high 20s, early 30s. Yeah. I imagine he's. He's got to be around Eugene's age. Yeah. Well, and if you say Eugene's, like, at this point in time, we'd say Eugene's, like, 24, maybe? 25? 
Yeah. And Connie's like yeah, probably maybe, like maybe 20, 21. Right. It's it's hard. It is this really show hard. is hard with time. It is. And I would say I guess to to what you were saying like it uh, it is kind of odd that they haven't really fleshed that out like Wit has Tom, Wit has Bernard, right. Eugene has his friends. Although Eugene doesn't have a guy no. friend really. No. But yeah, I yeah. guess they've just Eugene gets Eugene gets Katrina, they've Connie been... gets Mitch. Yeah. That I mean that's as far as we go with fleshing out those characters. Well, with giving them peers? Yeah. Exactly. And then that's that's about it. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, so there's uh the next scene is uh Mitch and Connie coming into Wits End after yep. their date, right? Yeah, yeah, they went they got hot chocolate and went swinging. Yeah. I think cuz yeah. okay. And I feel they, like beverages and swinging don't go well together, but maybe. No, that's that's that is an excellent point. Yeah. I imagine <laughs> It's a, we got hot chocolate, we walked around the park, we yeah. finished our hot chocolate, we got on the swing. And then Connie said, I haven't been swinging in ages. And I'm like, is that something that you were like laying in bed thinking? Like, yeah. you know, I, it's been a good while since I've been on a swing. Hey, it has been a good while since I've been on a swing and I yeah. like it. Oh, so. I enjoy swings. Swings yeah. are a good old time. Problem is you can't, I can't do other things while swinging. Otherwise I get sick. Yeah, exactly. Like no, no podcasts and swings. Otherwise I'd maybe take that up. But podcast and swinging. Yeah. What if you record a podcast while swinging? Oh, uh, that sounds like an Andrew Sabo podcast I can, project. I can do that. <laughs> it, so they walk in and they are talking about Bernard's comment about the dog in a sweater. Yeah. Which is funny because I assume this is the next day. Yeah. They're, still they're just off. talking about that. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, no, it's good. I like it. I have um, done that before. And their their banter is just good. Yeah, like, they're they just, have good chemistry. Yeah, they they're are. just their cute boyfriend and girlfriend. They're talking about how much um, Connie ends up like accidentally hurting Mitch because they were swinging, and I think her shoe fell off and hit him in the forehead. Yeah, and there's like a footprint on yeah. his forehead, <laughs> which is all right. <laughs> yep, thirty shoes maybe, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and then there's did, did she dropped the microwave on his toe. How does that happen? How often do yeah. you have to move a microwave? I don't know. I mean, when all you make is is mac and cheese. Like, yeah, I feel like he must already have a microwave. Yeah. Unless maybe he had used it so much that he broke it, but... <laughs> right. I don't know. Um, and... Yeah, they're yeah, just really they're, cute together. They are. And then wit... But, like, obsessively so. Like, they yes. beat you upside the head with the yes. fact that they're a cute couple. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and it's hit home in the previous scene and this scene that they're just, like... All They're over each other. Always together. Mm-hmm. Because Mitch was dead. Yeah. And now he's not. Yeah. And they just went through the stressful Novacom almost taking over the world. Yeah. And Connie literally getting kidnapped and held at gunpoint. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> they should be allowed to hang out. We don't even but, know that they're kissing. Like, like uh, they're just really they're, they're good friends. They're definitely friend. not. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is... Wit is... Wit then... Ass is like... It's kind of snidely to Connie, like, oh, are you are you gonna work or just hang out with Mitch? Yeah, well, no, Mitch leaves. Yeah, Mitch leaves, and and Connie's looking at him go, and he's like, are you gonna work or are you gonna just fog up the window? That's and right. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, All right. Wit. And so Wit is, yeah, Wit I, is just laying into her about spending too much time with Mitch. She he's pointing out that. um just seems she's like they're always like, together. Right. They're always together. Like, Wit starts to lay into her. And yeah, and like, he's like, well, how much, like, how has your personal devotional time been? Right. And she's like, oh, well, it hasn't been great yet. Or, you know, it hasn't been I've great. just been so busy with Mitch. Yeah. Well, and then it's even more like, and then he kind of comes up like, well, we're just making up for lost time. Like, he was gone for right. all that time, and now he's alive and all this. Um, and yeah. I guess, like, I'll probably touch on it again later. I'm curious as to like i get that they hang out a lot but like is 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 mitch literally the only thing that she thinks about is mitch like the only thing that she has going on in her life yeah it's the problem of the way this episode is structured yeah where it is structured so that we believe that the only thing in her life right now is mitch yeah but that doesn't that's not realistic. No. Like like being real, like 
I hang out with my girlfriend a good bit, like, um, yeah, like, almost every day. And right. not for extended period of time, most of the time, most of the time it's just an hour or two. Right. Uh, here and there. And, like, but I wouldn't say that, like, it's uh, a situation where it's like, it, that's taking me away from God because my relationship with her is more important. It's more like she is my best friend or something close to it. And so I want to spend time with her. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a weird thing where, yeah, just because we're only seeing, we're only seeing scenes with her and Mitch this episode. Yeah. We're not getting like that, that, like it can't her, literally be the the how she's living. Yeah, if because, they go home, like I'm just wondering, like if she goes home, like is there no voice in the back of her mind that says, "You should probably do your devotions," or you should probably like, like does she listen to worship music while she's driving to work? Yeah. yeah. So we have this like oh, really go for it. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, in this whole like Connie trying to, I don't know, trying to sell us on the fact that all she thinks about is Mitch. Yeah. She. She drops this line of, I'm sure God understands. He's met Mitch. Yeah. Which is a laugh line. Yeah. But it's also like a... It it feels like a line written for a TV show, not a line that a person says. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. God's met Mitch. Like, I don't know. My frustration with Connie is pretty strong in this episode. Yeah. Like, I understand it, but also like... You are an adult yeah. for the most part. Like. Right. It's like, it's like, try and, try and balance things. How can she like, be? Like, have balance in your life. But also, why is Wit, I don't know. Wit, I guess Wit always intervenes, but it's like, let her. Yeah, let her, let her figure but it out. But I guess out. we also don't know how long this has been going on for. Yeah, but it's, yeah. Even if it's, like, I don't know, like, the honeymoon period in a relationship, which is, like, probably, like, the first month or so, like, everything is roses, you just want to hang out with them all the time. Yeah, but that's not godly. I know, I guess, apparently, (laughs) because... According to John Avery Whitaker. Yeah, I guess, who is God? That Um, is true. And then we cut, so the next scene is Connie and Mitch... Uh, Connie's yeah. closing up the shop. Yep, and they had planned on this earlier. Yeah, we, we I forgot Mitch, to mention that. Mitch comes back, and Bernard to... is in the corner mopping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> poor Bernard. I know it is weird that he is in earshot during this whole thing. Yeah, because I don't know. There's, it's just a little too. They're a little too mushy gushy. Yeah, for public. Well, they have this like they basically what ends up happening is they're hanging out there. And they're talking, and this is when the compatibility quiz comes up. And it's, like, quintessential, like, cosmopolitan, cheesy compatibility quiz. I think it's worse than that, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's rigged. It's literally rigged. It's, like, (laughs) crocheting or, like, fishing or hanging out with friends. It's Right. (laughs) Right. It's, like, would you rather be, I don't know, alone forever or dating the person you're currently dating. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really exactly. it's really dumb. Until they get to the question that Mitch disagrees on, which is uh Antarctica, well, Pittsburgh, or Bahamas. For ideal vacations. Right. And uh And, and Mitch is like, Antarctica would be pretty cool and, and Connie's, Connie's like, like no, no, you want to go to the Bahamas. Because that's where I want to go. Yeah. And it's like, like oh, I, Connie. Uh, I'd go to Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh sounds good. I if, like Pittsburgh. That's way cheaper than the other options. I'm and presuming money's not a factor, but I would probably pick Pittsburgh and Antarctica before going to the Bahamas. Yeah, Bahamas seems... I don't do well in the heat. <laughs> that's true. Um, but also, I don't know. I've got... I don't I don't like traveling that much. No. So, no. Pittsburgh I, seems pretty pretty good to me. I would but. say, like, Antarctica, just because it's so different from anything yeah, that I no, know. No, that, that, is, that is, like, a cool thing. Yeah, but I'd be interested. But, in yeah. That. Basically, I'm Mitch. Basically, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, um, <laughs> I aspire and, to be Mitch. Yeah, someday, someday. Um, then this is Tom interrupts them. Then with his mop, yeah, <laughs> he says, "Quote: The mop won't stop." stop. Yeah, Which that's is, that's. Oh, there's your rhyme line. There's our, there's our rhyming from earlier. Yeah, pick uh, up your feet, please. The mop won't stop. <laughs> it's great. And the way he says it, he's like, "Pick up your feet, please. The mop won't stop." And uh, and there's like, 
basically then they have this like discussion uh connie and mitch where they're talking about like how much they love each other and like what's cute about the other person like locks of hair and how you smile and get whipped cream on your nose and it's very like rom-com like yeah they're just they're laying it on thick yeah that is that is like you know three times extra cheese right on your pizza situation here oh man we should do a bonus episode where you and i just compliment each other like that so yeah this is bernard starts bernard just like chimes in with with kind of mocking like, oh yeah falling in love with the woman in the chicken costume well, he talks about how he met his wife yes which is that she was wearing a chicken costume because connie's like oh you've never been romantic like yeah because they're talking about i think they talk about at one point what they were wearing when they first met or something yeah. and and bernard's like yeah she was wearing a chicken costume at the, the chickadoodles yeah i was at the chickadoodles yeah. i was at lightheaded at her scent yeah and maybe, maybe it was just the heat and it's or maybe no he said maybe i was just hungry and then he goes oh. i want a sandwich yes. and then just walks off yeah and it's it's really funny here and i while listening to it i was like we just have deja vu for this episode i feel like i've actually seen this acted out and sure enough um there's a episode episode 609 is like a weird bottle episode where a bunch of characters are trapped in a building during like a storm Mm -hmm. and they just it's called prequels of love and they just tell like the story of them meeting there oh interesting Um, and and so So this is canon this is brought up again so so this is this is laying the seeds for what will be brought up like a hundred episodes <laughs> down the road, you know, wow. three or four years later. Good job, um, Odyssey. Yeah, I like it a lot. Good be it's good, really funny. Good, good continuity. Con- good continuity there. Because I literally had the thought of like, it, it is sounds this familiar. going? No, I was like, is this gonna flash back into the scene? Yeah, yeah. And then I it's just really happens. abbreviated because, yeah, I mean, in my mind, like I, I don't think I've ever before now been able to separate those as separate episodes like Mm. because it's just not a yeah i don't know i've never listened to odyssey in this context before yeah exactly Um, Um, and that's that's where that exactly that's where we end there and then it cuts back to the next meeting of the bible study yeah um and uh they're connie and mitch aren't there yet and bernard gives us the wonderful line of they're later than a penguin in a body cast yep it's true wow yeah just soak in that mental image real quick yeah i honestly you need to you need to we need to generate a whole list of bernardisms and that just needs to become the way you talk andrew oh okay all right i can do that like i i feel like i feel like if one of us was gonna pull it off it's definitely you yeah well i I have Um, a dumb enough voice for it so yeah all hey, right, everyone likes it. your voice. I guess. I think if it's just you don't it's tweet at us. Yeah, and if you don't, and if you do, be sure to tweet at us. If you want my <laughs> personal Twitter to tell me about my voice. We need to. We need to not hit this bit so hard. But man, do I love it. <laughs> it's funny. I think it's good. Uh, uh, um, shameless self promo. But yeah, so many people at this Bible study. Yeah, they basically. There's a like. It, it it sounds like they use one of the sound bites of like an auditorium full of people moving. Yeah. It it literally does sound like an auditorium. Yeah. Um Because bas- they're doing the just like vague chatter. Yeah. But the problem is when you do vague chatter, it always makes it seem like the group's bigger than what it is. Like a ton of people. Yeah, well, yeah, because yeah, like eight there's not that much vague chatter with like eight people. No. But with like thirty, totally. No. Like you the problem is with like eight people, you can usually overhear two conversations going on in the background. Yeah, and you don't actually want to put that in the episode. No, so you do chat. So we have just fifty like people there's... instead. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then basically, Wit is like, "Well, where where are they?" Um, oh yeah, so Connie and Mitch are not showing up. Yeah, and so he calls he calls um, Connie's mom. And yep. asks if she's left for Bible study yet, and basically he finds out, oh, she for too much to have forgotten. She went bowling. Yep. And he has the line of, he's talking about like she usually like puts some priority on yeah on yeah. this and whatnot, and she says he says Connie might not always be the most responsible person. Yeah. Just. Oof. Wow. 
Witt is hitting it. Wow. He's... It's not that he's wrong. No. But, but why would he just turn not, on her? It's, yeah, it's just not classy. I don't know. I don't... Well, and, and my beef with Wit this episode is how petty he is considering oh, yeah. all of it. It's gonna get rough. So... There's, it's gonna get honestly, rough. Honestly, we've got this next scene I enjoy and I am mad at the rest of the episode. Oh, yeah. So... We'll get into it. Buckle in. <laughs> um, so so we then cut to the... The date. Yeah, where they're... I think this is after the date. I think they're at dinner, right? Yes, they're at dinner after bowling because he makes the comment... About something about uh, Parmesan. 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 She does... I, I Connie can't say Parmesan? She keeps saying Parmesan. She's classy. Parmesan. 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 <laughs> Dear I would goodness. have preferred that. Parmesan. Oh Parmesan. Maybe that's an actual John. Thing. Yeah, it might it might be a regional thing too. Yeah. So Connie's talking about the fact that Mitch has seemed distant this yeah. whole evening and she thought they'd kind of gotten past this. Mm-hmm. It's very reminiscent of the last time they went bowling. Yeah. Except In Connie was secrets. being yeah. Connie was being more distant in that. Well, Connie was purposely pulling away because yeah. She wasn't, Mitch sure wasn't she giving trust information. Him. Yeah, it was. But Connie is so in this moment is so incredibly frustrating because she she goes straight from Mitch seeming distant to I thought that we were past this and like like it's I mean the like there was no I'll see if this gets better maybe he's not feeling well like. There There's, are yeah. so many things like there it could be a like she never says what's on your mind like what are you thinking right. about you seem off is everything all right like is there anything that I can do for you like she just goes straight for the I thought that we were past this and I'm like oh my gosh yeah. Connie you are too much Yeah Oh um, yeah it's not great And then basically Mitch is talking about um basically brings up the fact that uh, he had a phone call with Agent Borland from the FBI, yep. and he was super complimentary and was saying, like, you know, how talented you are and, yep. and all kinds of stuff. And then he kind of concludes it by saying, and they want me to come work for them at the F- or he wants me to join the FBI. And Connie, and that's where the scene ends. And then it comes back on Connie being like, the FBI? And yeah. Don't you know how dangerous they are? Yeah. To which Mitch has the best retort ever. He says, sure, they killed me, remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love Mitch. He's yeah. so good. He is. It's, I don't know. And here's the thing. I'm glad they're communicating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Regardless of how Connie's not handling this well at least is being discussed yeah i guess uh, for me it's more like i'd rather it be discussed well because well obviously i'd rather it be discussed well yeah i'd rather it be discussed than not discussed yeah i mean i'm glad that that's that's brought up i don't know i my frustration with connie in this arc is that she doesn't really seem like the idea like the like there's any upside like there's any benefit for mitch joining the fbi it's all like well you're leaving and then you're doing this and like you're like you're leaving me again and it's self-centered exactly exactly and 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 mitch is kind of on the side where he's like well like i kind of actually would like to and i kind of would like to but he also isn't like he's not firm in it. No, no, it's it's just a possibility at this point. Right. He's like, I'm gonna like I, I I'm gonna see this out and whatnot. Yeah. Because this is a, a, an interesting opportunity, but also he's talking to her about it and not just being like, yeah, the, you know, this is bad. Like I don't know. Like it, yeah. It's it's definitely. It has its upsides and its downsides. I think that Connie kind of needlessly freaks out. I mean, I understand that, like, in that moment, your gut reaction is to freak out because she is right. Like, 
she really fell for Mitch like she's never fallen for anybody before. And then he was taken away. And then she got him back. And now she feels like she's going to lose him again. And that is scary. But you also need to bottle up your crazy just enough to not scare away the person that you love so much. Yeah. <laughs> like, and understand that, like, love often means sacrificing your interests. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's hard that she comes so out of the gate opposed yeah. when Mitch is in such early stages. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is, yeah. We then have, uh, what they oh they they decide to now go rollerblading. Yeah, yeah. Then they like, talk about something else. Bible study, presumably in the evening. They went bowling. Yes. They went for food. Yes. Now they are going rollerblading. Yes. They're rollerblading at ten at night. That's the yeah. only way. <laughs> That's the only way that this is happening. Yeah. But they're rollerblading at ten at night in pitch black, Great. and uh, yeah. Probably holding hands, but that's about it. Um, yeah, and then it cuts to Connie uh, leaving a message for Wit. Yeah, th- this um, show answer. loves answering machines. They do. It's, it's. I mean, the only other form of recorded audio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than television and radio, which they also love. Um, uh, Wit doesn't have a TV. They don't love TVs. That's true. <laughs> but they do like news reports. Yeah, did learn that in Overcome. Um, um and basically connie's leaving messages being like hey you said that i could call you whenever and no matter like what's going on if i needed you and it's and it, i know it's late but i need you yeah. and then wit doesn't pick up yeah well, I mean, she's, I mean, she's like i guess i'll just see you tomorrow tomorrow morning at, yeah tomorrow's morning because they have an existing breakfast date because connie doesn't have friends her own age <laughs> right but we also have never heard of this before. No, never. Convenient. How long? How long have they? Like, I get she. He's he's surrogate dad, and like, yeah. I'm honestly pro them meeting. F- oh for, yeah. For breakfast, but oh, they yeah. meet at the diner every Thursday. Is it every Thursday? I mean, yeah, it's kind of established. That's kind of the implication. I mean, maybe it's recent. Maybe it's just the past couple of months, but you know, it could be a good like relaxing time during Novacom when all yeah. the other crap is happening. Yeah. Um, so, Connie gets there the next morning, and we meet wonderful diner worker Grover. Yeah, <laughs> voiced by Townsend Coleman. Who's that? Jason. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That man has two last names. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah. Townsend is not a first name. Nope. <laughs> um. Can you imagine that kid in elementary school? Oh, my word. Like, four plus four. Yeah, what What's you... the answer? Raise your hand. Yes, Townsend. No, Townsend. What is that? Jason? <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. I'm not hating. No, it's fine. Um, and, yeah, he's basically like, oh, it called to say that he wasn't going to make it because he's fishing with Tom. Yeah. And Connie's like, what? He never misses it. Oh, the other thing to hit is... Connie was there, um, yeah. well, on time. They're supposed to meet at 7. She's always there at 7.15. 7.15. She actually got there at 7. Yeah. And, and we decided not to show. Well, and we get this little, like, brief dialogue where she's, Grover saying, like, yeah, you always show up late, and Wit's always here right at 7. And I always ask him, well, well why do you show up when you know she's going to be here at 7.15? And she's like, uh, well, Grover, like, when the one day that she shows up on time, I want to be here and see it happen or something like yeah. that. And so it's kind of, like, emphasizing the point that, like, oh, he's, he's really not there. Yeah. And uh, this, this is Hal's Diner, by the way. Yeah. The infamous. Yeah, the infamous Hal's Diner. And then when she realizes that Wit has canceled on him to go fishing, yep. uh, he says something like, are you sure I can't whip you up for something? Hal's here, and he can make you his famous omelet. Yep. So, universe being fleshed out. We've yep. got Hal's Diner. Hal is a chef that works there and makes good omelets. Yep. Now we know. Maybe eventually we can get an entire menu <laughs> if we pay attention. You might be right. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I cannot stand immediately. You know what's going on as an audience member. Yeah. You get that Wit 
is blowing her off to make he, a point. Right, is trying to make a point by not ha- spending spending time with her, and it's crappy. It's horrible. Wit, you are supposed to be this kind old man who literally has said, I'm always here for you. Like, you are supposed to be the moral high ground, and you are making, like, a, you hurt me, so I'm going to hurt you back so you know how it it's feels. It's so malicious. I don't understand it. And, like, and. Well, I'm going to give you a taste of my own, me- or of your own medicine is just a jerk move. And not biblical at all. <laughs> no. I. So much. It is. Why? It is so frustrating because Wit is. He goes back and forth from being such a good character and like, oh, and we even see like oh, good man. guy Wit a little bit later in this episode. But in this spirit, like in this um, next situation, like next couple scenes, like Wit is just the absolute worst. He is yep. a petty schoolgirl that is just trying to make a point. Like you hurt me now, yeah. you know how it feels. Yeah. So you won't hurt me like this anymore. Like, jeez. I understand, but, like, you're an adult. I understand that Connie's the immature one here, but you need to be the one that says, Hey, I have have feelings like this, and I'm going to tell you how you've made me feel, and you can choose to respond to it. Right. It's like, meet her for breakfast and say, Hey, you skipped out on Bible study last night. That wasn't cool. Yeah. Like, have a conversation. This is such... And my problem is how they play it off. And how they play it off later is the worst, where, like, Wit kind of slyly mentions, like, well, I was just trying to make a point. And then he basically just gets off scot-free from being... Yeah, and Connie's like, oh... I think Connie actually figures it out, where she's like... She's like, "Were were you trying to make a point? And so, basically, Don Connie leaves. She goes to work, hoping to see Wit at work. Jason's in there making snickerdoodles, looking for cinnamon. Yep. Tries to substitute paprika for cinnamon. <laughs> Not acknowledged, but I got a laugh out of <laughs> he it. He talks about nutmeg initially. Yeah. Which would maybe work. Maybe if there were like eggnog cookies. But I then. Don't know. Yeah. But then. Yeah, paprika. paprika. That Bad might idea. work. Um, um, Con- yeah, this is another thing. Wit left a note for Connie, and Connie's like, oh, great, like, what does it say? And, sh- and it says, Connie, please clean all the gum off the undersides of the seats and save the green ones for <laughs> Wooten's collection. <laughs> <laughs> collects green gum. Which, it seems perfectly uh, in character. Yeah. I don't think this is, I wish that was more of a runner. It should but. be, I, do you think he has a mural? He's got to be, like, making something out of old green oh, gum. That's that's exactly it. Is He does a lot of these kind of, like, weird pseudo-art projects. Yeah. And so I have to assume that's what this is. He has a slide in his house because he's expressive that way. Yeah. Um, and because he's rich as sin. Exactly. <laughs> I have feelings. Um, yeah. This, uh, what, Mitch shows up mm-hmm. to talk to Connie... And Jason has one of my favorite turns of phrase where he says, I guess I'll just go do my snickerdoodling in the kitchen. <laughs> it's snickerdoodling so, is it's so good. I think that's the only verb that we should use for making snickerdoodles. I love it. Um, um, and I so was... Mitch is basically just like stopping by to tell her that he's off to interview with Borland. Yeah, basically is saying, hey, I have to cancel tonight um, because right. uh, I'm going to interview with borland and connie's like freaking out and she's like oh my gosh like i thought this was just like a like a kind of a fantasy idea and he's like oh yeah we're just gonna plan out things and she's like plan something out and he's like yeah well i want to have like a good understanding before i jump into it and she's like before you jump into it like you're gonna jump into it and and she's just yeah. she's losing her mind here yeah um not not great uh yeah and then basically we didn't really touch it, but Connie really wanted to talk to Wit because once she left all those messages, didn't see him at breakfast. Right. Didn't see him at oh, work. Yeah, she wants to talk to Wit about the Mitch stuff. About the Mitch stuff, yeah. Because she's freaking out. Yeah, because she's mm-hmm. afraid she's going to lose Mitch, which yeah. has become so much of her identity recently. Yeah. Uh, that that's a big deal. Yeah, of course. Well, and, and more so just the idea of like. And Wit's always the person you talk to about those things. Yeah, and, and for her, like, this is her father figure. That's important. Fathers should not be petty and retaliate to their kids. 
Great point. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic point. And that's not what I am here for. Not what God's like. <laughs> All right. Um. And then it kind of cuts to um, it cuts to Connie yelling, "Mitch is joining the FBI." And Bernard goes, "No, I said I have an itch in my left eye." <laughs> yeah. At which point I was just like, "Is Bernard just?" always hanging around with Zed now? He must be. It made sense that he was cleaning up the one night, but why is he there now? Presumably he took like eight months off during Novacom, and he's just got a lot of work to catch up on. <laughs> um, yeah, and then... Yeah. yeah and then uh, the the phone rings, um, and, and Bernard just goes like, oh, I'll get it. Like, you probably couldn't hear it anyway. And, uh... And Wit is calling and asks Connie to make more uh, butter pecan ice cream. Yep. And that's, again, like, Connie being like, oh, I'm hope... Oh, because Connie says, I've been leaving... Yeah. Messages, that's, if that's Wit, let him talk to me. And he, like, very deliberately, like, hangs up on... Bern- like, gets off the phone as quickly as he can. Yeah. And then Mitch calls the shop, and we get the patented one-sided telephone call of her being like, oh... You were with the FBI, and it went well? And how was the interview? Oh, that was well as well. <laughs> and, uh, and like, and, and you'd have to go to Virginia? You'd leave next week? Like, we get this yeah. exposition, um, and then Mitch calls the shop talking about his interview, and then Wit comes in and blows off Connie completely, because Connie's like, oh, I want to hang out. Like, hey, Wit, can we talk? Like, oh, I need like, I need to talk to you for a second. And Wit's like, actually, I'm already late for my dinner with Jack and Joanne. I got to go. And then he just storms out. Which is hilarious. Because Wit must have gone out of his way to book out his entire day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he put some serious effort into that. Into that petty. And then Connie, it then cuts to Connie just kind of walking alone outside at night. Being like, I thought she was talking praying at first, but she's yeah. talking to herself and kind of feeling like everybody's abandoned her. Right. Like, Mitch won't talk to her. Wit won't talk to her. Like, right. what's going on? Like, I I don't even know where God is in all this. And then she kind of drops the line of, yeah. why would God let me care so much about someone just to take them away? Which is a very real feeling that I've had at more than one point in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough. And the thing... There's a couple things here. Like, I get that things, like, the stuff with Mitch has really ramped up overnight. On the other hand, I, like... That would be a great time for her to have a girlfriend that she could go to Yes, like absolutely. Or Joanne? Mother? Yes, that as well. Anything? She's got other people in her Oddly life. Oddly wise to, child? Obviously, Wit's the go-to person, but she could yeah. talk to Joanne, or Jack for that matter think pretty easily the the thing here is i don't think that she's wrong to feel what she's feeling i don't it seems over dramatic it does seem over dramatic and it seems like okay connie what wit's doing not great however it's only been a day yeah it's been one day like things can't be moving that quickly yeah and like literally at this point it's been about 24 hours probably and, like, I get the 24 hours when you're freaking the crap out could be right. a long time. Yeah, but it's still, yeah. Sorry it, for my use of the C word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I, I feel, I don't know. I, I, like, I sympathize with Connie, but, like, also when it's brought back up, like, later, like, really? She has her boyfriend, and then she has wit, and yeah. she doesn't. Like, literally doesn't have anybody else that she's going to. Like, for me, like, I don't understand how she can have such a strong Christian community around her like she does. And literally, when she runs out of wit and she runs out of Mitch, she doesn't feel like she has anybody else. Right. That's that's really rough. Um, so she shows up at Wit's house. Yeah, which, suddenly gonna put in there, audio engineering for her walking at night is great. You get yep. some crickets in the background. You get, like, the crunchy crunch of gravel. Mm-hmm. Real nice. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan. Yeah. She shows up at Wit's house. He is actually on the phone with his daughter, Jana? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless he's just faking it real hard. Yeah. It 
seems weirdly convenient because he, he she shows up and he immediately tries to brush her off by saying he's making a long distance call. Yeah, I'm making a long distance. And then she distance. breaks down crying and yeah. he bails on the call. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, Jan." I'm I like, guess I he probably go. just scheduled it so that he would have an excuse if Connie showed up. I don't know. I am having a really hard time with Wit's intentions this episode. Yeah, it's rough. Or um, maybe it was one of those things where it's like, oh, I actually didn't try this, and now it really sucks. Right. Um, but and then Connie. But no, breaks. he definitely seems like he's intentionally brushing her off. When yes, he yes, he is up. trying to not. So like, it's not like this was accidental. He is still trying to. Which the dodge balls her. on him for that? She shows up at your door. Yep. You cannot leave. You're at your house. <laughs> yep. And you're still trying to brush her off, dodge her. This is, yeah. you know. Help him with the old, like, jab step, spin move situation and yep. get away. Um, and then he's like, oh, Connie, you're crying. And then he says, Jan, I'll call you back. And then she kind of breaks down and then it's like, I feel like my world is falling uh, down around me. And and then Wit replies with, oh, it hurts to be put on the back burner, doesn't it? become mean girls <laughs> when did we become freaking regina george i don't like it i don't like it at all <laughs> and then and then connie's like oh it just like i feel like everything's falling down around me like there's all this stuff going on with mitch and you weren't there and when i like when i wanted you to be there and you're always there for me and you weren't and then he's like it hurts to be put on a back burner doesn't it and then connie's like were you just doing all that to make uh were you just trying to do all that like to make a point or something or as she lays it all out it kind of comes to her and then it was like just making a point yeah no accident here just wit being a jerk yep a big old butthead yes oh my gosh and then and then it's turned into so then she feels like yeah like mitch wasn't there you weren't there God wasn't there. And then Which, Witch says, well, like, you haven't been spending time with God, so who left who? I, I, I really hope that that's not how God works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, and the point is not that... The point that you need to emphasize is not when you walk away from God, bad things happen. It's in this moment, when you walk away from God, God still wants you to come back and God is still chasing after you. Yes. Like, that is that is the encouragement. Like, I don't want a benevolent God that's just sitting up there on his, like, big throne tapping his foot like freaking Bugs Bunny. Like, when's she gonna come back? When's she gonna come back? Like, that doesn't, that does not paint a picture of a Yahweh that I want to worship. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. and that's yeah. not not it's, biblical either <laughs> it's frustrating it's incredibly frustrating he's like oh you like in the same way that because you were uh, you kept canceling my plans with me i decided to cancel them with you the fact that you're not pursuing god means that he's not pursuing you exactly or that bad things are happening because you aren't pursuing god yeah or because your devotional life is bad and i'm like Dear goodness, if I got into a car accident every time I missed my devotions, like, yeah. I would be, well, I wouldn't have a car. We'll say right. that. Um, this is, yeah, that's, I don't know, that's kind of the end of my notes for for that scene. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would, that I would close on is then just the idea that, like, submitting to God's will and viewing it in a biblical perspective is good having a biblical worldview of the problems that you're having is vital to living out the truth of the gospel yeah that is good passive aggressively ignoring people until they turn to god i don't think that'd be how jesus would do it i'm sorry yeah yeah could you imagine if jesus was raised from the dead and then just like never talked to peter after he denied him three times just like sorry bro uh, wait what's your name again <laughs> like, oh yeah yeah I, passive aggression man not a fan yeah not a fan and considering yeah yeah 
All right. The, Moving on. If only this next scene made me feel better. Nope. Nope. Not really. And so basically Mitch and Connie are at Trickle Lake. Yeah. And which As is always. really nice. Uh, if they're on a picnic. Yep. Because rollerblading, Sandwiches. bowling, picnic at Trickle Lake. Jeez. That's the options. Yeah. That's all they got. Maybe glove shopping. Yeah. And skydiving, apparently. <laughs> um... <laughs> And uh, Connie kind of brings up the idea of submitting to God's will and, like, understanding that, like, I didn't really acknowledge that maybe this is what God wants for you and talking about his devotions. And then Mitch is like, oh, I haven't been doing my devotions either. Yeah, Mitch Mitch also just hits on that this has been, yeah, that, like, he agrees with a lot of what Connie's saying and sees, yeah, and that's one of the things that, like, better in this scene yeah is, yeah is the two of them is him kind of being like yeah yeah like i'm at a similar place and yeah we should try and turn that around because because regardless of whether or not these things are bringing about bad things or whatever they have been prioritizing their relationship over other things in their life exactly and or, and you know they and sh- over like over their relationship with Jesus. Right. Whether that's missing Bible study once. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it is a, it, it is clear that like Mitch is a, dis, I won't say necessarily a distraction, but like he can become a distraction or an idol to a situation only in that, an idol is anything that you put before God, and even if you know in your like in your mind that you don't put Mitch before God, if you feel in your heart that right. that who you're gonna make the sacrifice for, it's gonna be Mitch instead of God, then that's when it's a problem. Yep, I um, agree. And they kind of come to the conclusion of we're gonna take a step back, and they decide like, well, I don't want to not date you, yeah. but we do hang out all the time, so we're gonna hang out less. Because a holy relationship, you only hang out twice a week, right. Sundays and Wednesdays, or, yeah. and then maybe maybe if you go to the same youth group, you can do like a Tuesday night in there too. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, rant time or go for whatever. It. So Soapbox. my my big frustration in this scene is Connie's laying out all this stuff that she's been processing through juggling Mm -hmm. stuff with wit and this her relationship with god versus her relationship with mitch all of this things all of these things and she's not sure what to do and rather than this being a discussion between the two of them about how to proceed she asks mitch what to do and mitch lays out a plan yeah. I realize that this is the focus on the family model of how what a relationship right. should look like. Women submit to the men. Whatever. Yay. But it is uncomfortable and I was having a hard time with it. Yeah. Where it's like yeah. you guys are in this relationship together and you're Connie's, not even married. You're not married. You were just dating. You're talking about bringing your relationship back. And Connie is the instigating force here. This stuff has happened to her. These are her feelings. She lays it out for Mitch. And he's like, I agree. And then she's like, okay, Mitch, what's your plan? And he's like, we're just going to have to hang out less. Yeah. Hey. It's so frustrating. Have an open discussion. Come to this spot together as a unit. It's almost like they, they, they want you to be, pretend that you're not married and that you're singled with everything other than the submission thing, and then you then you still need to submit because he's a man and he's the right. head in the relationship. It's like, no. Right. If you ain't married, you ain't doinking, and you ain't, you ain't to have to submit to anybody. <laughs> like, you don't, that's not your role. Oh my lord, you can't just pick and choose what part of it you like. Yeah, it's... It doesn't, yeah, it just didn't sit well. It was very, yeah, it, yeah, it just felt so focused on the family. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I I wish I had 
a better way of stating it's, it's, that. It's pushing an it's, agenda. It's pushing yeah. an agenda that their audience agrees with that I don't. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, good segue. But that's kind of what this show is now is just me looking back and being like, well, us looking back and, and seeing how different me and this show that was integral to my childhood development are. Right. Yeah. And how much I love it still. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is that is our premise. Yeah, and also I, she puts sprouts on a sandwich. She does. There's also the quote of uh, I think Mitch. Mitch's thing is like when Connie's like, so we just shouldn't date, and he's like, well, I don't want to not want to date. Yeah. <laughs> Which, fair. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like yeah. taking a, uh, taking a step back isn't seeing somebody less, always. Taking a step back is understanding, like, like, like living a life that's centered around God does not mean only doing those things. That means bringing God into everything that you're doing. Yes. And if God, if you don't want God to be there, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. Right. Yeah. It's a, and we even get that so early on in Connie and Mitch's relationship. Exactly. With, they want to lead a Sunday school. Right. And they're at There's, Bible study together. Right. There's a lot, like... They presumably go to church together. Yeah. And they talk about faith stuff outside of that. But yeah. then, at this point, it's like, well, Con- like Once again, it's hard because we're seeing everything from Connie's perspective. But it feels like the show is saying, Connie got her perspective out of line. She fell apart. She comes to Mitch. Mitch offers a solution. The thing that's weird is... and. They slightly made me happy by Mitch acknowledging that he wasn't doing well. That either. this has also been a struggle with him. Yeah, yeah. That Connie was able to point that thing out, and he could be like, "I recognize this in myself as well." I feel the same way. That's awesome. That's good. I just wish that it, they it was had more kept of an that equality attitude. than less of a. Oh yes, I struggle with that too. But thank you for coming to me, young one. I shall say this is what we do. We meet two times a week for two hours, never alone. Yep. And so that's where the episode ends. Yeah, we, we got to... Don't, act- don't know where Mitch is, is going. Is he going to go to the FBI? Is he not? Um, but he and Connie are going to see less of each other. And that's about it, which is vague as frick. Yes. Very vague. Sorry for using the F word. <laughs> Stop apologizing, Andrew. <laughs> Embrace it. Yeah. Heck. Um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, bleep that out. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we get like a Chris wrap up, and she kind of. And I felt okay about the Chris wrap up just because it did focus on the point of the episode, which was you need to put God first in your life, which is true. Jesus being Lord of your life is the ultimate thing. I just their means of proving their point was frustrating for me, yep. and for you as well, presumably. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm frustrated, but oh, I'm frustrated. Uh, but yeah, not, I don't really have any other closing thoughts. No, not a, not a high ranking episode for me. Not for Connie and Mitch, that's for sure. Not for Wit either. Yeah, Bernard's the one highlight. Bernard's like, a the, hero. The two things I enjoyed in this thing were Jason Connie snickerdoodling. Mi- <laughs> Jason snickerdoodling. <laughs> Connie and Mitch's banter. Yeah. And Bernard's laugh lines. Yep. Yeah. The rest I really could have passed on. And so, Grover? <laughs> so that's that's an unfortunate place to be coming back from Novacom, but I don't think it's gonna be uh I don't think this gonna will be, be a ready. standard. Yeah. But yeah. It's it yeah. is interesting, all things considered, like in the grand scheme, they're starting off this new album and it really doesn't feel like they're building anything. It just seems like this is an arc that they're awkwardly in the middle of that they are pushing along. Right. Right. Because they we didn't get resolution at the end of Novacom with Connie and Mitch. So now they're like, well, Guess we, we got to understand. We got to like figure out what we're doing with these characters going forward. And Heaven forbid they be in a minor relationship that we don't constantly focus on. Well, they, I mean... This is the first episode coming back, and it puts their relationship in the forefront. Yeah. But it's not as though every episode for the next yeah, three albums is just Connie and Mitch. There's a lot of stuff that we won't cover. Yeah. 
um, that goes alongside. So, do you have anything to promote this week? Um, weird, weird promote, but um, I so there's a site called Letterboxd. I'll link this below. It's a site for just like tracking the movies you're watching. Oh, okay. Um, and then you basically like when you watch a movie, you press it, you just type in like watch this movie, give it a rating out of five stars and a review if you feel so inclined. Sometimes some people just do like quippy one lines, some people do crazy in depth stuff. I tend to land somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just do yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, if you're at all interested in what I'm watching and my takes on things other than Odyssey... Yeah. Uh, no, that's worth it. It's a platform I really enjoy. Like, it's... I got on the last FM train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Similar thing, but music. But yeah. it's the closest thing to social media that I actively enjoy participating in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I've got... there. You there are, are a bit of a, like... a. I won't yeah you you are uh very educated like yeah you're educated in the movie department as far as like directors and behind this like and yeah like cinematography and things like that so it you're coming at it from an intelligent perspective yeah, i don't know i i have fun i i'm fo- i'll follow you posts and stuff and it's uh it's fun so i'm dj weaver 29 uh-huh. on on letterboxd obviously I'll put a link uh, in the show notes for that. Um, if you're at all interested in what I'm watching and what I think about it. I so. am. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, what, what, what do you have got? What do you, what do you have this week, uh, Mr. Sabo? <laughs> you, did you forget my first name? No. <laughs> Actually, uh, this just yesterday, uh, this is coming out on a Tuesday. Um, on Monday, I dropped another episode of the Andrew Sabo podcast with... Uh, my guest, my good friend, Brandon Waltero. Uh, I've worked with him for a couple years. He's, or not a couple years, for a couple months. He's a really, really wonderful guy. Uh, I love hanging out with him at work. Um, we'll probably talk about, you know, music and movies and uh, just life experience. He's a really, really good guy that I really enjoy, and uh, I'm really excited to have him on the, on the pod. So give that a listen. Um, yeah, season two, actually, I'm, I'm really enjoying recording it right now. Uh, with a little bit better um, sound quality and things like that, it, it feels good to be putting out a more polished product. So if you gave my pod a listen to before and thought it was too jokey, maybe go ahead and listen to season two, episode one, and just give it another try. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm pretty proud. Oh, yeah. And we will link in the in the uh, show notes. Awesome. Of course. Uh, uh, yeah. Season two. It's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh yeah that's so everything that that's it we'll be back um, next week with uh episode 507 the benefit of the doubt bye bye guys wad fam chalk pod is a presentation of the Lidditz podcast co-op this show is a fan podcast and has no official affiliation with adventures in odyssey or focus on the family as such the copyright is ours under creative commons Follow the podcast at Wadfam Chalk Pod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at wadfamchalkpod at gmail.com. Episode 29, Between You and Me, was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Sabo, and edited by Dylan Weaver. And I'm Nathan Haverstick, hoping you'll join us next time for more of the Wadfam Chalk Pod. <laughs>